How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Creator's Process. Today, I have here, sitting next to me, Nick. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, David? Yeah, very good, very good, good. thank you. Uh, so, tell me, what are you doing with yourself in the, um, the creative arts community? Okay, so um, I guess the main thing that I do a lot of is drawing with pastels. So that's probably the thing I spend a lot of time doing. Um, and sometimes, I have been a photographer for a long time, but it, it's something that kind of comes and goes. But the good thing about, you know, doing, going to regular life drawing sessions, I'm drawing at least once a week, if not more. Hope, I would like to draw more. Um, so yeah, I don't, I'm an artist, I guess. It's sort of weird. Like, I don't yeah. kind of describe myself as an artist. It sort of feels weird, but it, it is who I am as a person. I've always done yeah. I've always drawn. So, so you're just a kind of like a mixed media yeah, artist. That's right. So yeah. I kind of, um, ugh, what year was it? 2003, um, 2004, 2005, I studied graphic design um, at Monash. And mm -hmm. that's where I met my best friend, Lily. But the reason I, I was thinking about doing visual arts and I wanted to be kind of like thinking about being a fine artist or whatever that is. Then I thought, actually, I like doing lots of different things. Like I like drawing, I like, you know, photography, I love collage, I love lots of different kind of forms, printmaking and stuff like that. So I thought maybe doing graphic design would be a good way of okay. um, kind of, instead of doing like just painting for three years, I thought, or something like that. Nothing that that's nothing wrong with that. I, I really mm. admire people that study you know, one form of art for that length of time, but I just knew myself, I'm kind of interested in lots of things. But then when I finished that, I decided I didn't want to be a graphic <laughs> designer, um, which was funny because uh, one of the things I learned during kind of study was that you kind of almost have to sell your soul to Satan to be a graphic designer a little oh, bit. Gosh. It sounds really bad, but um, because we had some students, like alumni that would come and talk to us and they, for example, I'll never forget this one guy who was doing product design or product packaging design and I think he worked for Gillette or something okay. which is like one of the worst because of the amount of plastic and kind of packaging which is just so bad and he was literally saying don't do it don't get into packaging and I was just sitting there going oh god it was so freaked me no. out but I kind of it was interesting so I finished that I finished that degree and then I went overseas to live in London for about sort of not it was like six or seven months and I just went to kind of to travel and it gave me a bit of time to think about what I wanted to do. Um, so I came back, I spent a lot of time traveling, you know, spending a lot of time in museums and galleries and I love those, I'm a huge geek for that sort of thing. Yeah. And then when I came back, I was like, straight away, I enrolled in um, a master's in cultural heritage studies and um, I decided I really want to end up working in a museum or a, so kind of studied a bit and took a lot of time volunteering and things and then I realized actually I want to be an archivist because I really love documents and history. I love objects but I love that you can pick up a document and make links just by looking you know reading it and get, you know getting the information from it and then yeah um, so that's what I ended up doing but kind of drawing is my who I am as a person. I, I feel the most me when I'm drawing I think like when I'm sitting and drawing it's like the calmest I'll ever feel because I'm probably something about artists I think we do get very sensitive and anxious and um, we can be quite stress we can stress a lot about oh, yeah. things or overthink things I think mm. but when I'm drawing it's kind of the only time when I'm really at peace yeah I, I think for a lot of us that is definitely as you said our go-to for like you know releasing our inner feelings and emotions. Yes, exactly. It's always like that. So I have to ask, the alias Bleeding Heart Prince, where, where did that origin come from? Ah, so um, when I, I was, I had a business called Bleeding Heart Prince for a little, a short time. This was probably like 2008, I think. I was going to start a t-shirt design business, oh. and but I never did it. I never actually did it. So, but I like, the, the, the name Bleeding Heart, Cause I'm a bit of a bleeding heart. Like I'm really sensitive and pretty much, it's pretty easy to tell if I'm my emotions by just hearing it in my voice usually. Okay. Or, um, and so I was trying to think of something that represented me like, mm. and bleeding heart prints. The prints was more because I was thinking about doing t-shirt kind of designs <laughs> or screen Love prints it. at the time. But then it kind of, it's weird. It's kind of stuck with me all this time and it kind of works for, um, 
for me it works kind of represents even my drawings you know eventually I don't know what I could do I haven't really considered this and even as an archivist like thinking about even talk, thinking about today talking to you I was like okay I've got so many journals like oh my goodness what am I going to do with all this stuff and the, the, what I love at the moment is that we do because of Instagram and things like that we do document our photo, you know drawings pretty quickly like usually on the spot mm. and then they they're shared you know so that is kind of preserving them in, in a digital format yeah which is interesting and kind of it puts a date on it as well. One thing that I know I've talked to a lot of different artists about is, uh, for example, Hini always says, you know, make sure you date your work because you can see how it's changed over time. Yeah. So absolutely. yeah, like if I go back through my Instagram feed, feed, I'll go, oh wow, I think I've actually, you know, you know, you start realizing that you because you're doing, you've been drawing more regularly, you notice how you've changed over time. But also because I've been drawing a really long time, but there was a period where I, I wasn't really active as an artist drawing regularly. And you can get so you can lose some of your mojo a little bit mm. if you haven't been actively drawing. Yeah, so drawing's one of those things you need to do it every day to get really good at. Mm. I think at it okay. at, or finding yourself. But if you have huge periods where you don't draw, you kind of it's need to build to... it up again. I think. Yeah. No, I, I think I, I get where you're coming from with that. I think even when I was, I had a gap where I didn't do photography for a long time, and to find that mojo to come back was just like trying to rediscover something that you had done before you know so I, yeah. I, I get that like you know sometimes it can be a bit of a, a soul searching <laughs> yeah. where you go like where where did that go yeah where did that... I think it's still there it's like it it, it never like if you if you're a creative person it's always it's something that no one can take away from you I was saying that to a friend recently would you classify yourself as an artist who needs to be in the right mindset when it comes to creating your work so like you you feel like you couldn't use your negative energy to create art like do you feel yeah, like that's a good question yeah do you think that you need to have a, a, i guess a straight head when it comes yeah. to creating good question i think um i think i can definitely work through it like say yeah. if say for whatever reason i'm not having a good day and i start drawing um but it's amazing how quickly i can feel you know i can a good day, a bad day can become good if I'm drawing, but I think it's something weird, like to get the inspiration to draw, it, there's something I have to tap into, um, I have to be feeling really inspired, so, and often it's around the model, because I'm drawing, at the moment what I'm drawing is usually life, life models, mm -hmm. so I'm not, um, I don't tend to draw, I'm not drawing outside of that, I used to draw all the time, so I'd spend days and or hours in my bedroom when I was younger, just drawing geometric shapes and things and landscapes and things, or just ideas, like things from my brain, like onto the page. But when I'm drawing a model, it has to, if the model, if I'm not fully inspired <laughs> looking at the model, if there's something not, sounds really weird, but I have to feel a, a bit of a connection to the model somehow. Okay. Not yeah. a per it doesn't have to be a personal connection. For example, um, I'll just, maybe I'll use an example. Yeah, go, so, for, it. go for it. Madeline Winter, when I drew this one, it was like probably, it's going to be soft pastel everywhere. Because I don't, I don't finish, like I don't use any finishing kind of material to stop, you know, people use hairspray and things to kind of, to fix it. But um, I kind of like it when it gets a bit of um, like red, just going all over the place. And it yeah. just is like, I like it. It's kind of like a bit of an after, yeah. like the aftermath of it. You That's know? it. That's a bit of a... And you yeah. can see, there's, you know, you can see... The material like there's a mat like kind of uh, I guess this material yeah yeah so yeah. you know when as a archivist in my day job I love material culture I've got a friend who's a uh, archivist as well she we've had discussions like she loves seeing coffee stains from a cup on a, on a document for example like it leaves a bit of a bit of a story behind mm. and I agree with her like I love seeing you know finger marks in the ink or something in okay. a kind of yeah. Stuff. It's just as much as I love looking at a painting and seeing the brush strokes or, yeah. you know, you can sometimes see something of the artist is left behind. Mm. But yeah, so, uh, for example, when I was drawing Madeline Winter for this piece, I, I found her so inspiring um, as a person. So she was talking about how she was interested in, in bees and she was doing all this research and just, okay. I was so interest, intrigued by her, but I was also intrigued by her um, intelligence and... and that comes across in people's eyes as well, I think. 
like I, I, I don't know if I'm reading too much into things. But it's like, no, go ahead. Yeah, when I, when I like look at a model, I kind of have to feel like a nice, like I, I, not that I have to like them, of course, but it does help me feel really inspired if I like the model. Yeah, because I think it makes it easier to work with them. Yeah. And, and you're able to get more out. Like, yeah. So I definitely, I, I yeah. can definitely tell that you're someone who having, I guess, not a personal relationship, but like just a good relationship with yeah. the person who you're drawing is very important to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So I, I get like, that. Yeah. Totally. And I, and I think it makes it easier for me to draw. Like, it's funny. Like, I know that mm. sounds strange, but sometimes it's just like, oh my God, like my hands just can't keep up with my brain. It's sort of like my hands going ahead. Yeah. It sounds strange, but it's sort of when I'm drawing someone that I'm finding, like I really like, I admire them as a person or... Yeah. The way they're posing even that mm. can be part of mm. it um it can sometimes it can be the costume that they're wearing can just be really interesting if they're wearing a costume or their hairstyle for example the tango um session we had recently with oh, abbots for life training was so good and yeah. um the lady the model her name's rebecca she did this work on her hair which was just so beautiful i it love was her really hair cool that she did that yeah, I remember that. it was so. It kind of makes it when they're sort of like maybe because I've got a graphic design background as well. If it's something kind of if there's something kind of graphic, I don't know, like a graphic element to like for example, just the really cute curl, the way that she curled her hair, and just her really beautiful makeup on her eyes and things. I don't know, and she just there's something I I can really when I'm looking at a model, especially I feel this a lot more I think with women. Um, if the woman is really powerful, like a strong person. I, I really enjoy drawing them. Yeah. I, I feel that about male models as well. It's different for me with male models. This sounds weird. I don't know why I'm okay. sort of, you know, I'm thinking about the gender a bit, but it's, if the male model, for example, with yourself and John, if you're both really sensitive to what you're doing, and I, I find it easier to draw someone that, a male model, when they're kind of in mm. tune with their feelings, or yeah. they're really mm. respectful about the other model, I find it, I really enjoy drawing them. But if there's someone, like I haven't, it hasn't happened often, but I have had, I've drawn kind of toxic males. Oh, okay. um, yeah. I don't find it inspiring, like I don't, I find it a bit difficult to draw them, and even, and even if they're really super muscular, I find it hard to draw them as well. Because okay. for me, it's more about the face. It's yeah. more about like a kind of a connection between me and the model. That it's not. It's very much a connection in my head. You know, when I'm drawing them, I really have to feel like there's something I like about them, and then yeah, I find that easier no, to yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. yeah, I find it easier to draw them. They have to have a good stage presence. In yeah. yeah, I think no. also you know for years the way I met um, Jean Luc was through Dr. Sketchies, which is, you know, mo most of the models were less performers. So, you know, they're not life models per se, they're performers. So it's a different thing. So that was really interesting too. So it was sort of around, I think what I really learned from that was that a life model and a, a performer is quite, it's similar, but different. Yeah. You yeah. Know, they, they have their similarities, but you know, they, they do have their differences. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because I think that, you know, to be a life model, you need to be, it's a, a whole, like, art form of course and the you, you get the models that you know i have my favorite models in my head <laughs> that i enjoy to draw because i know they really understand how to to kind of hold a pose you yeah. know the ones that kind of like fidget oh. a lot and move it's really hard to draw them not and i totally understand why they're fidgeting like oh, i don't absolutely. think i could sit for yeah. minutes <laughs> but you know but i really respect the ones that try to hold yeah a pose for that length of time or or thinking about you know, hand placement or the way they're looking at, you know, like looking into the middle distance, kind of engaging the room. Like they're kind of, they're okay to look up if they need to. Like they're okay to look at people mm. like in the room. They're not feeling uncomfortable. That makes, I enjoy drawing those sorts of models, I think. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed drawing yourself and John because it was really, what was really sweet about it was that the poses were quite intimate. So, in a lovely way, like this one, I really like this one actually. Oh, uh, it's one of my personal favourites as well that you've done of us. Yeah, like it's it's funny because I do, I do a lot of drawings and I'm like, oh, I don't like that, I don't like that, but like occasionally something will happen, I'm like, I actually like this one because what I'm trying to do is kind of, there's something about the connection between the both of you. It seemed like a really lovely kind of symbiotic relationship was happening. I didn't, I don't know, like sometimes I, I think I build up a whole story in my head. Yeah. It's not even, no, like, it's, it's yeah. not, nobody's saying this, you know, like 
even J, you know, for example, if JL's running a session, he might have a theme and he's, you know, he'll, he'll sometimes even explain it a little bit. But in my head, it's like I'm having a whole other experience. It's your interpretation like, yeah. of how you see it. And I, I think for us and John, it helps that we're, we're really good friends. So that's like we, nice. We could see yeah. that. Yeah. So I think that's probably what you were reading from that. And yeah. it's like, it's really interesting it. how like you kind of narrate it yourself like yeah, I think that's yeah, great yeah. you create your own narration yeah for it. it's yeah. amazing what's going on in my head during the session because you know if a pose is going for like 10 20 minutes it's mm. amazing the in internal dialogue that's happening yeah <laughs> um, like you know if I'm really feeling a pose and really enjoying it, I'm like oh this is good like I'm actually it's funny how you can lose it like you can be drawing something and going oh I think I'm enjoying I think this is I'm getting it I'm getting it and then there's a moment you can just do something weird and then it's like oh Oh, I've lost it. I've oh, lost no. it. <laughs> it's sort of, like, what, have I, oh, what have I done? But I was feeling really good at the start. So sometimes, I think I was sort of saying before, like sometimes I can't keep, my my hand can't keep up with my head. Oh, yeah. So it was just funny, like, so I'll be drawing and I'm trying to, there's something in my head and I know I've only got a certain amount of time to draw that pose. And if I'm really liking what I'm doing, I'm like, I need to do it, I need to do it. So I'm trying to capture it as quickly as I can. But then you can sort of like slip and do something weird and you're like, why did I do that? And why then it's like, I've lost it, I've lost it. But yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was a really interesting session. I always love seeing two male models working together when there's a tenderness. I find that really lovely. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy the relationship you can see between if two models are working together, that can be really yeah. lovely. And it's it's something that I enjoy to draw because it, it yeah. feels like a really nice moment to capture if I can. That's yeah. awesome. And uh, <laughs> I think, you know, I guess because it's not very common, you don't see a lot of two males yeah. together. It's always like it's three often, females, four ma females and all that. So it was right. probably a different dynamic. It's a little bit rare to see it and often you'll have... I think in life during this point, I don't know what the ratio is to how many mm. models are working in the profession in, in Melbourne, for example. There's, oh, probably, there's yeah. probably yeah. more women than male mm. models, I'm guessing. Yeah, um, definitely. So, but yeah, I enjoy drawing any, as long as the model's feeling comfortable. Yeah. And there's something like often, and for me, it's something tender and, and beautiful is happening. I'll find it much easier to draw them. But if it's something um, like, for example, if the model is really 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 muscly and like a little bit too little, not arrogant but kind of oh, a yeah, little bit yeah. of that maybe yeah i just don't you don't connect like, with that person with yeah. yeah no i get that and i think that's uh just the way that you work you know and i yeah. think everyone has their specific ways of working and exactly. i think oh, that's really cool and um i have to ask with this i think for me one of the things that stood out for your work when you were at the session, my first session at Abbotsford was your unique style of drawing. What inspired you to draw this specific way? Like, so, like, mm. I guess I, I would love to know, like, what is your, what was your process of why you decided to draw this specific way yeah, that you do? Like, that's a really good question. I don't, it's so funny because I guess I've always drawn, not exactly this way, but you know, it's evolved a little bit over time, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I think that the reason for me, like I've always in, spent a lot of time with contour lines. Like for example, some artists will spend a lot of time shading and they can do amazing, beautiful work that way. But for me, I often, and this is something I do with photography as well. I like to zoom in on something and crop. And I think I do that when I'm drawing as yeah. well. So I'll kind of focus, I, I often will uh, focus on one part that I'm really, there's something about the shapes that okay. are happening. For example, the pose with John and yourself, instead of trying to capture everything that was happening, what I was really loving was the dynamic between your faces, like your profiles and your kind of the shape of your body. Like, mm. it was, you know, just wanting to focus on that. In terms of adding heaps more color than I probably have done in the past, I have used color in the past, but I, there was a stage where I was using just a lot of charcoal and it was just like the blank, you know, a blank page and charcoal and kind of messy, you know, kind of shading and things. But then I thought, I think, it could have been jail, but others have kind of been, they're like, you should use some color. Like, and I was thinking, okay, okay, mm -hmm. I'll try. So, and I, and I actually really, what I love about with the John and your pose there, um, at one stage I was just like, instead of having a blank page, that can be a little bit intimidating. Like, yeah. You know, putting yeah. down the first mark, but some, somehow like just putting down some color, even just like roughly like okay. color on the page, yeah. it kind of, you start seeing shapes and it makes it easier oh. to put lines down. Okay. I know that sounds strange, but then I also, no, I get that. it's something happening in your brain while you start, you kind of, 
and it also um, color does bring things to life like yeah and yeah. I often choose a color based on like I like to use a lot of reds and you know blues and things but it kind of I it can be connected to an emotion so for, for yeah. me feeling like red is such a bold color um, it's such a pa passionate color and I'm that that night I just decide I want to use a lot of red for you know maybe it's something to do with the model that makes me want to use red um, or I might be, you know, I really want to have really black blacks. Like in Madeline's eyes, I'm talking about this one, this piece. I really wanted to get her, she had this really piercing, beautiful, her eyes are quite fierce, I think, or yeah. something about her eyes. They're very, you can tell that she's very intelligent. I don't know her, like personally, mm. but I can tell she's an intelligent person. So I tried to capture that through really bold, like, you know, dark kind of lines. And But yeah, it's interesting, I think. It's sort of weird. It's something I don't think a lot about, but it's nice to think about it. Yeah. It's sort of, yeah, it's just, I guess I've always enjoyed kind of, this is sort of strange too, <laughs> another strange thing, that the, the kind of influences that you have. I'm thinking back to this film, uh, it was a while ago in the 90s. It was like a, this film just happened to have an artist that was... I really admired the work of the artist that was, it was an actor playing an artist, but whoever was doing the actual artwork, okay, yeah. I was just like, wow, um, I think it was, was it Ethan Hawke? There was something about the artwork I've always admired kind of, rather than super realistic style, I'm probably more interested in expressive styles of work. So, yeah. and you know, there's so many artists that have probably influenced me over time. Sadly, you know, growing up, it was probably a lot of male artists that kind of, you know, the, the blockbusters that would come to the galleries and things like the Picassos, who yeah. I still admire, even though, you know, he's not exactly the, the best human being, but that's a whole other story. Yeah, that's a still, completely different story. That's it. <laughs> I can still admire his work and exactly. I really love his work. But yeah, exactly. but thinking about, I'm trying to think about, I was influenced by so many different people because I was really into photography. Mm. Um, there's a lot of photographers that I kind of followed, like for example, Cindy Sherman. Um, uh, oh, hands down, she's probably one of stuff. she's an incredible photographer. And what I really love about it, her work, is that she, you know, using herself as the model and the way she uses costumes to kind of <laughs> transform herself. And she's really interesting too because she's a huge horror fan. Oh, really? Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. So. I've like recently got really heaps more into you know horror than I have been in the past. I'm usually more into sci-fi and things, but I started going to Melbourne Horror Film Society a few years ago, and it's been a huge in, like kind of influence I think on me. Just okay. kind of being exposed to different types of films that I hadn't seen. Like I I'd seen horror films growing up and everything, but now I'm just more exposed to it. It's um, I think that is coming out a bit in my work. I think I use a lot more red than I probably did in the past, which is, in I don't know if that's... <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I don't know if it's like representative of blood or like kind of passion or that kind of thing. I don't know. It, it's kind of like a double um, meaning. It kind of has more than one. So like, mm. as you said, it could represent the romance side of it mm. or the love, or it can just represent the gore and the blood. Exactly. Know? So I think yeah. it's up to the viewer's interpretation of how they view it and how exactly. they feel, you know? Because art's such a subjective thing. Oh, so true. Yeah. Very much so. But, no, I, I love that. Um, I can definitely see that, that horror influence in it, a bit of that mm. horror influence. It's really interesting. And do you get influenced by, like, obviously not the man, like, obviously the person himself, but mm. Pablo Picasso? Like, yeah, I think by. He, he's definitely had... I'm sure he's... I'm sure he has influenced my work, especially he, like his later work, I think, you know, because he started off, he was a really young person when he started, I don't know how old he was, like 16, and he was doing super realistic kind of mm. paintings, and then he kind of became more abstract over time. Yeah. I definitely think his later work is the, you know, I'm really fascinated. All that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, people like, you know, Henry Matisse would use beautiful, his use oh, of colour yeah, Matisse, is so yeah. beautiful. Mm. But yeah, like, it's... They're not, it's not just those sort of, I guess those are the kind of artists that everyone's really familiar with. So it's hard not to, you get, it's just by osmosis, you kind of get influenced. Um, it's hard not to be influenced, I think, by, if you're, if you're a student of art. But when I, you know, if I look through all my books and think, oh my God, I've tried to spend more time, because um, there's a lot of books by, kind of, you know, the, over time I've kind of collected books and it's mainly male artists. And then I started becoming more, 
kind of conscious that I need to be more aware of also there's a huge amount of female artists out there that, that don't always get the same recognition as male artists, I think, and yeah. it's still happening yeah. today. Like even on Instagram, I notice how there's heaps more male photographers than there are female photographers. Mm. And I kind of, it's weird. It's just, I don't know why, but my brain is always <laughs> thinking like, it just doesn't seem right. Yeah, um, no, like, I think even when I'm doing this series, like I'm trying to, like I, I'm, I'm actually hopefully soon going to be interviewing another female photographer mm. and I've been, I've even got a couple other friends who are female photographers That's and awesome. so like trying to, you know, push that bit forward as well because, you know, like it's a, it shouldn't be a specific gender or age at the end of the day. It's about, at the end of the day, all of us creating art. I agree. And it's like, it's something that shouldn't, yeah, be shouldn't, specific. Yeah. yeah, definitely. We rise together. Yeah, exactly. I love, I love that. I mm. think there's definitely um, injustices that happen kind of on the institution levels of the way, but I think it's, I think more at a grassroots level, which I feel like we're at the more community level mm. of um, being creative. I think people are more aware now. So mm. like making sure that everyone's getting, I think it should be fair. Fair shot. Yeah, exactly. Which is totally happening. I think, it, I think this is becoming more, people are becoming more aware of this, over, you know, and it's, things are changing. Like we, it's a lot of things happening, but another person like Frida Kahlo, I, I really admire her. Like she's great. She's isn't she? great. She's an incredibly. You know how I was talking about. I have to. I feel like I need to connect with the model somehow yeah. as a person. Yeah. Um. I don't just see them. I like when I see a model naked, a life model. It's not a sexual thing for me. It's like they're they're a person. Yeah. Um, just an everyday person. That's right, and they have like their body and their their mind and everything is connected. It's not just I'm okay, just seeing yeah. them as. A shape uh, or a separate individual. That's it. It's, yeah. more, it's sort of. So I guess like thinking about artists that I really connect with, Frida Kahlo. She was an incredible human. Um, she went through mm. a huge amount of. Mm. She went through trauma, mentally, physical yeah. and mental. Yeah. But she was such an incredible, incredibly unique human being. So the fact that she, you know, even though she was in bed, incredible amount of pain, she was still painting, which oh, is just amazing. Yeah. I just find that so inspiring. Anyone that is that kind of driven to be creative even d despite everything I just yeah love her work I really love she, her style too she had such a very unique style that like during that time was very not usual like That's especially fine. mainly because she worked with herself like she could only because she, I think I remember reading somewhere that she only had a mirror yeah in her room so she would only use herself because exactly. she was only seeing herself at the time so exactly. like that's why she would always use her own, herself, herself as, as a subject yeah so um and the way she kind of went through what she was going through like how she expressed it on yeah. her, her work it was really incredible and i think a lot of model like a lot of artists couldn't afford like models for example like mm -hmm. um like dagar he used prostitutes in the bar you know like in, he would just paint them while they're going about their kind of like yeah, making their bed or something and or they're about to bathe and he would be painting them which is really interesting but I think yeah like I think a lot of artists probably can't if they need to pay for a model they might not be able to afford it so using themselves makes sense in some ways but for her she was really sort of she wasn't able to really get outside her own no, space she wasn't often. she no. was yeah really interesting person I think I was gonna say you're hev heavily influenced by her I think yeah she's probably a person that has definitely I spent a lot of time studying her work so I'm de mm. you know I don't know if it really manifests in terms of like I don't know if you can see it in my work or but it's definitely um, she's someone I definitely admire uh, maybe it's you know I, when I look at my work it's sort of hard to I don't know if there was anyone in particular that like directly influenced my style yeah um, but it's like a whole combination of lots of different people that I've been inspired by for a long period of yeah. time. But it's interesting, it's lovely when people, you know, they'll say, this your this piece reminds me of this, you know, this yeah. artist, and it's kind of nice. It's like, you're comparing me to that person? I'm like, like, wow, oh <laughs> yeah, like that is freaky. Growing up, I really loved um, Henry Moore, you know, the sculptor, and he did this whole series of mother, mother and child series. Yeah. Big, you know, those large bronzes, and I was okay. like obsessed with them when I was younger. I would, oh, I would wow. draw them for hours, like I would sit in my room. <laughs> Like I used to spend a lot of time when I was drawing, kind of looking at different artists that I was influenced by and just copying their work. Something, I don't know what it is about drawing. I think I was learning to draw by looking at their work, but also kind of in, had my own, my own way of seeing or kind of reflecting on their work. 
in my drawing. So one of those, there was a piece by um, De Cherico that I really, I, I have to show you, I'll have to show you the piece, but it's, it was a really surrealist kind of piece of, there was like a train going in the distance and there okay. was like a big pile of bananas, I can remember. <laughs> and I spent ages shading and drawing. Just looking at it going, what's going on Yeah, going on here? and I really enjoyed yeah. drawing it. But yeah, it was like, there's different artists that I've definitely connected to. Like David Bowie was a painter as oh, well. I think I did hear that. Yeah, yeah, and I, lots of people kind of were a bit critical of his paintings, but I really love his work. It's really yeah. bold and colorful. And he would often focus on the face as well. Not mm. that I'm, not that I'm actually influenced because I kind of learnt about his work fairly recent history, but I really admire his work. So yeah, there's lots of different artists, I guess, that have influenced me a little in little bits and pieces yeah. along the way. So it seems like, yeah, well, art has been a huge influence on your life just throughout, yeah. your, journey, I, throughout this journey of life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can't remember a time when, like, art has always been part of my life since I can, as far as I can remember. Like, my parents both take my sister and I to the gallery and would spend a lot of time looking at art and they, they would have you know lots of art books around the house and prints that I would stare at and so yeah it's probably never been a time when I haven't been kind of around it in some way I think being part of the life kind of drawing community in Melbourne has been so wonderful in the last say I'm trying to think when it, you know when I really got involved was probably 2007 or something like that so for the last 13 years, I've really met so many amazing like models, performers, artists. And now I feel like I'm part of this kind of, com it feels like I'm part of it, like a nice That's, community, yeah. which feels really good. And it's weird because I still don't sort of call myself an artist, but I guess I have to just own it that I am. That's yeah. part of who I am. When I think of artists, I often think of people that are doing it full time like that's an artist yeah um, but yeah I'm not doing it full time but I really yeah it's a huge part of who, who I am as a person yeah. no I definitely think you know when you find your right people you mm. know it feels great and you know the art community is just always so welcoming and I, I get where you're coming from with the whole like I'm pretty sure when I started photography I didn't call myself a photographer until like maybe two years later where mm. I was like Okay, maybe I can just say that I'm a photographer. Yeah. I've been doing it like longer than like two weeks yeah. or something, you know. <laughs> so I think, you, yeah. you know, so I, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. But then I guess for me, I just don't want to sound very up myself. You yeah. know what I mean? You don't want to go like, I'm a oh. photographer, you know, yeah. like kiss my feet. No, no, no. Like I just, I think that's always. Because, you know, you meet those type of people and then you just go, oh, oh. Maybe just go away. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to be kind of, yeah, I don't want to be thought of as that kind yeah. of person that's sort of... You don't not come across that. Yeah. I just want to say oh, that's that now. <laughs> I, I definitely get imposter syndrome a little bit sometimes, which is weird. Like, I think that's a... People are talking about that more and more, like this kind of notion. I think artists, yeah. You can often feel like it's weird saying, I'm an artist when it's not the thing that I do all the time. Um, yeah. It's not the way I kind of earn a living, but it's something. But it is something that is a big part of who I am. Yeah. I think what I was going to go on from, like, think you know, rolling on from that thought, all the people that I have met in the community of Melbourne, the kind of creative community, they all have multiple talents. Like, it's so fascinating to think about it. Like, you talk to them and they're like, oh, you know, my day job's this, and you're like, wow, and then you do this, and then they, they have multiple things that, you know, creative people have multiple outlets, I, I find. I think that's kind of, that's quite common. Um, so yeah, drawing for me is just one one part of who I am. I think, is, I would like to do more photography. I haven't done any kind of yeah. art project, like photography projects for a little while, and I'd like to do that. And it's something that I've, because my day job is a little bit removed from all these things, um, it's easy to be kind of drawn away because you've only you've only got so much of yourself. So another part of my the thing that I do is because I'm an archivist, I also run and one of the people that runs um, New Cardigan. So we are a group of gallery, library, archives, and museum workers, and we kind of have events and things, and that takes a bit of my time as well. So okay. it's sort of like trying to find time for all the things that I'm yeah. doing. But I well, I insist on making sure that I, you know at least do life drawing once a week. Like, I need to make time for drawing. I've told myself, like, I don't want to get to a point where I, I don't draw for a long period of time. But if I'm drawing at least once a week, it's a regular thing that's happening. Yeah. Um, I'd love to do more drawing and do some more projects and things like that. I'm even thinking about doing some more paint, like painting. I haven't really got into painting. I have painted in the past, but 
I've got a bit of a project in mind, so I'm thinking of doing a series of portraits, paintings, like small on a small canvas just to start with, and I want to keep working, you know, getting bigger. So I really want to be, I want a, the creative side of me a bit more out of my time, like I want to spend more time doing it. I really enjoy doing life drawing, but it's sort of, you know, you've got the models set up and it's, it's amazing, it's lovely, but it's someone else's vision. Yeah, um, you want to go with your own vision. Exactly, so yeah. I want to do something that's mine. And I've had a, a friend recently say to me, you should exhibit your work. And I'm like, uh, oh. I never, like, I never even think about that. <laughs> but it would be so cool. I would like to do that. And I'd I would like go to, to that. Yeah, thank you. I would I'd like, to. I'd really like to do something like that in the future where I really have the confidence to be like, this is a show. I'm going to do a show. I really admire friends that, are, that do exhibit their work because mm. it takes a lot of guts to like put your oh, work up on, on the wall it really like, does. and that's that's when you have to really own that you're an artist like I can't I don't want to have that imposter syndrome thinking or oh, am I an artist or am I not it's part of who I am but if I'm willing to back myself and do an exhibition that would be really cool so maybe that's something I can plan for the next couple of years that would be really cool yeah it sounds perfect you will definitely have to keep me posted about it because like I said I would I would definitely go to that exit exhibit Thank you. and um yeah i look forward to hearing about uh, seeing some more future projects and even being a part of it yeah like, that would definitely be awesome. i'd love to collaborate i think i really enjoy collaborating i get so much out of it i think working with someone else and having an idea and then making it happen is it's like it's so it's fulfilling. magic coming to life exactly like having something like nothing and then making something yeah it's such a great feeling like absolutely it's yeah like i did that you know it's a nice feeling <laughs> it's like i really did that i did that and <laughs> you know like when one day when i'm gone you know somebody might look at my drawings and like them or i don't know that i know this sounds weird but sometimes it i really think maybe because i'm an archivist i'm reading letters of people that have been dead for like a hundred years sometimes mm. and I kind of feel a little bit like a voyeur sometimes, but it's kind of nice. They've left their mark on the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. A little bit of themselves is there, like in a, in a letter. Like a little bit of that person is still alive, I guess. You could think of it that way. Yeah. Um, and that, I think of that in the same way with art. I, I get so emotional seeing, you know, I've cried in galleries before because wow. I, I was in MoMA, I think it was, and there was a, a piece and it was such a beautiful piece and it really made me cry. It was an abstract expressionist. And I really admire this this artist, and now I've totally forgotten the name of the artist that I'm thinking of, but it'll come to me. But literally, I was standing in front of the work, and just like like tears were like flowing. Oh wow! And I I, I was like, oh my god, this is this is really I'm getting really emotional. I didn't, <laughs> you know, it was sort of a surprise. It kind of surprised me. Not that yeah. I'm I'm not surprised. I do get emotional, but that the tears were really flowing. But it was because I'd seen their work in the you know books and admired their work for so long. And to actually see it, like, stand in, in person, front of it, yeah. it was just, oh. Breathtaking. It was breathtaking. It, it mm. totally, it moved me. Um, I'm, I'm one of those people too, like, if something, I can get, I can sometimes get choked up if someone says something really, you know, emotional. I'll get choked up just by, because they're emotional, so I'll get emotional too. Um, but I think that happens with art too, because, like, we, for example, I went to Van Gogh's, there was a, Van Gogh exhibition, I think it was like the seasons of, and it was talking about his life and how tragic, like he, you know, shot himself and three, it took three days for him to die. And I was Jeez. sitting there reading, like just reading some of the, there was a lot of quotes throughout the exhibition about that he was just an amazing person because um, he wrote to his brother, there's lots of amazing insights about him as a person. But I was just so, ups, you know, moved by how tragic his life was and how much pain he suffered and then I'm sort of sitting there going oh, oh like I can feel you know when you can just feel the tears are gonna yeah and it's like it's weird being Australian it's sometimes hard to like people freak when you're showing your emotions I think they it's not always okay for some people they're thinking are you really upset is something wrong it's like nothing's wrong I just this really you know this I'm really just me. the heartstring <laughs> yeah exactly nice. but yeah that's something I love about art it's very emotional yeah we provoke emotion and we want to leave a little bit of us behind when we're not here. Yeah, I think so. Um, well, I want to say thank you so much for inviting me into your home and just talking about uh, just your process to why you create art. And yeah, it sounds like you're a very emotive artist, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Like I always love talking to like-minded people who create art with pure emotion. It's amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank so, you, Jaden. Thanks for inviting me. It was really lovely.
That's my pleasure. Um, so everyone watching, please go and check out Nick's work. I will leave links to everything, Instagram, all of it, down below in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.